But first, let's get to the major news that we brought you in the last hour. And after a turbulent summer where Manchester United spoke to other managerial candidates, Eric Ten Hag has signed a new contract with the club. The deal adds another year to his contract and that ends in the summer of 2026. It's understood he's agreed to the same terms as on his existing contract. We're told United are also working on a potential refresh of Ten Hag's coaching staff. And there are also changes behind the scenes with former Chelsea technical director Christopher Vavell coming in on an interim basis. And Dan Ashworth appointed as sporting director this week. Well, this is what Ten Hag has said. I'm very pleased to have reached agreement with the club to continue working together. Looking back at the past two years, we can reflect with pride on two trophies and many examples of progression from where we were when I joined. However, we must also be clear that there is still lots of hard work ahead to reach the levels expected of Manchester United, which means challenging for English and European titles. In my discussions with the club, we've found complete unity in our vision for reaching those goals and we're all strongly committed to making that journey together. A new United Sporting Director, Dan Ashworth, said this. With two trophies in the past two seasons, Eric has reinforced his record as one of the most consistently successful coaches in European football. While the club's review of last season highlighted areas for improvement, it also reached a clear conclusion that Eric was the best partner for us to work with in driving up standards and outcomes. This group of players and staff have already shown they're capable of competing and winning at the top level. Now we need to do it more consistently. With our strengthened football leadership team now in place, we're looking forward to working hand in hand with Eric to achieve our shared ambitions for this football club. Well, let's get more on this. We can go live to Chief Reporter Kavi Solokol, who's in Germany, but has been across this story for us this summer. Uh, Kavi, good afternoon to you. Just to explain what has been the process then to get to this point. Well, it hasn't been uh, straightforward, but we got there in the end. And I think most uh, match day Manchester United supporters will be very, very pleased uh, because they've always wanted Eric Ten Hag to stay. Uh, they know that he's done a very good job in very difficult circumstances. If you go back uh, six weeks or so ago to the FA Cup final, there was lots of talk in the build-up to that game that Eric Ten Hag's job was on the line, uh, that he may lose his job even if United won the FA Cup. But of course, United downplayed all that and they made it clear that after the FA Cup final, there would be an end-of-season review. Now, as it happened, Eric Ten Hag managed to uh, get a brilliant performance out of the United players for that FA Cup final. They beat Manchester City. And then after that game, United's review began. Now, the review lasted a couple of weeks. And according to Eric Ten Hag himself, who's been uh, working for Dutch media during this Euros tournament, he said that he believed that United had spoken to other managers, including Thomas Tuchel. Uh, he said that they'd spoken to multiple candidates. But in the end, they came to the conclusion that the best man for the job was Eric Ten Hag. And they flew out to Spain, where Eric Ten Hag was on holiday, and they told him that they wanted him to stay. And I think Eric Ten Hag was happy to stay as well. Of course, the only issue was that his contract runs out next summer. So I don't think United could go into next season with this question mark hanging over Eric Ten Hag's long-term future. That is why it was made clear that all parties would sit down and talk about him either signing a new deal or extending his contract. And that is what has happened. So six weeks after the uh, FA Cup final, we now know that Eric Ten Hag is definitely staying. And he's also signed a contract extension by 12 months on the same terms. So he will be United manager until 2026. And clearly something that they will have spoken about is targets. Uh, what do you think his targets will be for this upcoming season? Well, look, first of all, I've got to say, I think Eric Ten Hag has done a very good job. Uh, he's had a hard uh, job to do. There has been a lot going on behind the scenes at Manchester United. Everybody knows the long drawn out takeover uh, saga. Everybody knows about all the sort of various disciplinary issues that he's had to deal with uh, behind the scenes. Also, league performances haven't been good enough. It is simply unacceptable for a club as big as Manchester United to finish eighth in the Premier League. But Eric Ten Hag is a winner. 
We saw that at Ajax and we've seen that at United. He's won two trophies, the League Cup and also the FA Cup as well. What Eric Ten Hag needs to do now is improve United's league form. United have to have a settled way of playing. It has to be effective. It has to be successful. They have to take the fight to Manchester City. They have to take the fight to Liverpool, to Arsenal. They also have to deal with all these other clubs who are improving all the time, like Newcastle United, like Aston Villa, like Spurs, like Chelsea as well. So it's a big, big job for Eric Ten Hag. But I think he now has everything he needs to make Manchester United successful again because there's a new structure at the club, new leadership team. He's going to have help when it comes to recruitment issues as well. So I think everything is set up for Eric Ten Hag to be successful at United. It's a new chapter in the club's history. And as I said, I think the match day United fans believe in Eric Ten Hag because they see with their own eyes the work that is going on. Yes, sometimes performances are not good enough. Yes, sometimes results are not good enough. But they like Eric Ten Hag. They've taken to him. They like the way he deals with the players. When they step out of line or when they don't perform, he takes them by the scruff of the neck. He sends them out for extra running. He is hard on them. But a lot of fans think that that is what these United players need. And also, I think, United fans like the way he deals with the media. He sort of uh, is very quite sort of stern, doesn't give too much away, always protects the dressing room and always protects Manchester United's interests. So for fans, I think this is a good day. And of course, for Eric Ten Hag, it's a good day as well, because I think United are now showing that they have faith in him. OK, in an ideal situation, I think perhaps uh, Eric would have preferred if he got a three or four year contract. I don't know. Uh, I haven't spoken to him, but some people I've already noticed on social media are saying that, OK, it's not that much of a uh, new deal. It's just an extension by 12 months. But I'm not uh, too worried about that. I think if I was a United supporter, I would be saying, let's forget about the past. Let's forget about all the turmoil. Let's back the manager. And you touched on it being a new chapter. You spoke about the players there. There is this kind of new group of young players coming through. How much credit can Eric Ten Hag take for bringing through these youngsters? Oh, a lot, a lot. Uh, you know, Manchester United's history is based on uh, having uh, young players coming through. It's part of their identity. And Eric Ten Hag has been very good at developing young players. You know, we've seen how good Kobe Maynou is out here playing for England in the field next to Declan Rice. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think I was at a news conference where Kobe Maynou was being asked lots of questions about his reaction to the news that Eric Ten Hag was staying. And you could see from his face, he was delighted uh, that Ten Hag was staying. He's been a very, very important influence on Maynou's career. And also players like Alejandro Garnaccio, uh, who has thrived under... Uh, Eric Ten Hag. So I think that's a big plus for Eric Ten Hag, the way he develops young players. What I think perhaps he needs to improve on is recruitment. A lot of people looking from the outside in will say recruitment at United has not been uh, good enough. I think the new uh, minority owner, Jim Ratcliffe, has said it himself. He said recruitment needs to improve, but they have addressed that. They have changed the recruitment department. New people uh, have come in. So I think Eric Ten Hag is going to get a lot of help and assistance with signing players and also moving some players on. But yes, uh, to answer your question quickly, definitely the fact that he's so good at developing young players is one of the reasons he's staying. OK, Cavi, good to talk to you. Thank you very much for now. So yeah, Cavi, out in Germany there, you can see our reporter James Savundra uh, alongside me now to look at what this news means for United's business this summer. Cavi touched on it slightly there. So, James, how will United look off the pitch, first of all, going forward? Yeah, very different. A number of changes have been made since the leadership team already. And Dan Ashworth spoke in a statement today following the confirmation of Eric Ten Hag's contract extension about a strengthened leadership team. And let's bear in mind, Dan Ashworth only started work officially on Monday as sporting director he will, point, he will report to Omar Barada, who's going to be the new CEO. He doesn't start work until late this month after joining from Manchester City. And Jason Wilcox, a former Manchester City technical director, he joined from Southampton in the summer. So he'll report to Dan Ashworth. And then you've got a potential situation where Christopher Vivelle 
joins as a new director of recruitment on a short-term basis, with a view to potentially that being a long-term appointment moving forward. And so Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos have been desperate to try and create a structure around the head coach where United can be successful once again. And the hope is that there's a foundation and a framework now where this man, Eric Tenag, will have everything he needs to deliver success. And by success, we're talking European titles and winning the Premier League once again. Yeah, so that's off the pitch. What about the knock-on effect on the pitch then? Because I guess it's the hope that these changes make things better for United in the transfer market this summer. Yeah, and I think it needs to, to happen because Sir Jim Ratcliffe, when he spoke to the media the first time in February, he spoke about transfer dealings being the one thing that he really needs to sort. He said that being of critical importance because the dealings Manchester United have had over the previous years simply hasn't been good enough. You can see some of the transfers they've made in the two seasons under Eric Ten Hag. And you can see the fact there is a real scattergun approach. There's players later on in their career, the likes of Eric, uh, Christian Eriksen joining on a free. That was seen as a good bit of business. I think you see some of the players that have worked out really well. Rasmus Hoyland showed some really encouraging signs. Casemiro had a brilliant first season for Manchester United. But when you look at the signing of Anthony, a player who worked for Eric Ten Hag in Ajax, I think you can see how Manchester United were influenced very heavily by... Eric Ten Hag and what he wanted to do in this transfer window. Lissandro uh, Martinez has been really impressive with Manchester United, but has been unfit at times. And I think Manchester United will obviously pay attention to the recommendations and what Eric Ten Hag needs, but crucially they've got a structure around him now where recruitment will be led by Dan Ashworth and the names that we've, we've been speaking about that have been appointed. And United simply do need to get it right in this window. We know they're looking for potentially two central defenders. Raphael Varanda part of the club in the summer. We know talks are progressing well around the signing of Matthias De Ligt from Bayern Munich. We've been speaking about the interest they have in Jared Branthwaite as well. Two potential centre-backs coming in in this window. They need to strengthen in attack. They have one out-and-out -out striker now in the form of Rasmus Hoyland. We've been talking about Joshua Zerkze. Talks on going between... Manchester United and his representatives about a potential signing there. And in centre midfield, they're looking for options as well. So the whole spine of the team, Manchester United are looking at. But crucially, they've got the most important bit of business done in this window. They've decided that Eric Ten Hag is the right man to lead them into this new era. They've extended his contract. They'll now look at potentially refreshing his coaching team. And crucially, they're now to refresh this playing squad as well. So a big summer ahead, but a lot of good work done already. Manchester United will think anyway in terms of securing this man's future into next season and beyond.